like I say, um, the, the the Titanic should have had enough lifeboats for everyone. Uh, the collapsibles were, like I said, four or eight per funnel. I don't really know. Like I said, I I told them if you have to strap strap the collapsibles to to to, to the uh, to the to, to the smokestacks, then do it. But you better have enough you know enough lifeboats on that ship and all that other stuff because they're being fussy. Uh, one thing that we might have done though is they might have all gotten off, um, and we just we just we just told them that they were dead <laughs> because when I was done. I was like, uh, after the accident, I was like, okay, you're all dead because the cheap bastard would have killed you. <laughs> so we might have reported a few more deaths. I hope, I hope we just reported more deaths than, than, uh, than actually died because, um, because like I said, years, 30 years or a hundred years, I had, I, you know, people were laughing at me because I had all these lifeboats on all my boats, enough for one, one lifeboat per man. Or I mean, one lifeboat per, per uh, for every person on board the ship, and until that one night when the Titanic finally did sink, and then so if everyone lived, it was because I was a stubborn old bastard, and, and demanded that my ships be as safe as possible and have a lifeboat for every single person, and then after the after the accident, I might have just said, well. You're all dead because those cheap bastards wouldn't have had had had, had had enough lifeboats on board. But I don't know. Like I say, I was always really fussy about about safe ships and all that stuff and safe stuff. And like I say, you never want to be that man that has to wonder why. You could have saved more people, but you didn't. So anyway, whatever. It doesn't really matter now. It matters not. And um, when I first heard it went down, I was heartbroken or whatever. I'm trying to figure out why or what happened. And I used to know more about the situation and all that stuff. And you never know. She could have been torpedoed. She could have been anything. She could have been taken. There was a lot of stuff that was going on that wasn't so much political as physical. So, I don't really know, but it's a mentality I would, I would, I would carry on for all the cruise lines and everything else like that, that I demanded. And maybe one of the reasons why I went bankrupt is I was so fussy about having enough lifeboats for everyone on board my ships. The collapsibles, the wooden boats, or safe, um, safe detachable sections of the ship that could, that could keep people safe from drowning. And also, of course, the radio signal network that basically if one of my ships was in danger, the other ships would turn to and go rescue her. And like I said, the Titanic itself and other and my other White Star Line ships had towed ships across the ocean. <laughs> there were other ships that were stranded about one third of the way out. <laughs> like it was a common thing, actually. Sometimes people would be like, we don't have enough gold to get across. We give us a tow. It's like, it's closer to shore. Please. <laughs> Uh, I guess. Fine. So, and sometimes we would tow ships across the ocean, basically. Sometimes they would break loose and then go wandering. It's like, you better, you're going to have to catch the next guy. So, and another ship would come along and pull it along or something like that. Find it, basically. So, anyway. But, yeah. I mean, we would tow ships across the ocean and all kinds of stuff. We were a crazy lot, you might say. Us the White Star Lions people, we were very much different. But like I said, when one of my ships went down, French ships would respond, German ships would respond, U-boats would pop up out of the water. <laughs> they would say sometimes that, 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 that they could give a distress signal and a damn German U-boat would pop up out of the water and be like, yes, how could we assist? <laughs> Besides, we always paid whoever helped a White Star Lion ship money. And stuff like that. And basically they were heroes for giving assistance to White Star Lines. Which was the company that assisted, that assisted everyone else. And didn't need nothing. So anyway. though, But yeah. Like I said we were very much different. Like Germany would, would, would assist a White Star Line ship. Russia. Everyone. Anyone. Because we were the ships that had towed the other ships across the ocean. We were the ships that would run blockades to feed people. We were the ships that would always... 
respond, even in a storm. And I said, if there was a ship floundering out there in the ocean and it needed aid, we'd send a ship out there in the middle of a hurricane to go rescue them or go do whatever, pull them into port. Yeah, like I said, a crazy proud lot, you might say. So, yeah, with their triple expansion engines and the best ships in the world that could last a thousand years underneath the water and shrug it off like it was nothing. So, anyway, yeah, very much different people, you might say. So, yeah, you know, you'd almost think we were all gods <laughs> or something. It's like, well, I am a creator of life forms and galaxies and stars and stuff like that. But I'm also just a businessman, mining and shipping, Lucifer Star speaking. So, yeah. So you can finally meet me and who I am and know that, well, my name, my home name is Brian. But yeah. Anyway. The ships that would basically become the, 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 the Carnival Cruise Lines and all that other stuff. And like I say, you're not Carnival Cruise Lines. You're White Star. Get over yourself. Stop changing the name of my company. Anyway, whatever. I bought you back. <laughs> so anyway. At one point in time, I, well, I always kept my company uh, LS White Star. So at one time, at one point in time, though, I did walk away from it when, the, when I got in an argument over the, with the board. Like I said, the board was going to cut the lifeboats on my ships down to down to two thirds capacity of of of, of, of 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 every man, woman, child on the ship, and that's when I kind of walked away. But maybe I was being fussy. I don't know. You know, I was a fussy. I was a fussy person. Some people regarded me as the old man and stuff like that. You know, but everyone respected me. So, but. You know, I mean, though I might get mad and though I might shake shake my own hand and, and actually berate my crew sometimes or berate my people, but mostly because, like, you know, I didn't like to be that person that that, that wondered why I couldn't have I couldn't have saved more people when that when when that ship went down. You know, I didn't like it on my conscience, and I didn't want it on my people's consciences either. You know, my people had a clear conscience. You know, we did everything we could, and all that stuff. So. You know, my people could at least uh, rest, 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 uh, rest assured at night and sleep soundly, knowing it was no fault of theirs that something bad happened. Anyway, so yeah, you know, so anyway, and that's what the LS Titanic, the Lusitania, the Leviathan, you know, all the ships had in common. Me, Lucifer White Star Lines. So we built the biggest and the best. So anyway. Yep, 15,000 ship types types so, over the years. And one big colony ship that went to space. Well, a few, actually. So, Anyway, I'm Lucifer Star, by the way. Ta-da! Anyway, I know, surprise! Also the builder of the P-51, P-38, um, and the SR-71, and the LSF-A Blackbird, and also a few rockets and a bunch of other stuff. So, owner of Germany, Poland, and America. And at one point in time, like I say, I owned I owned uh, Mexico, and also C Colombia, and also Cuba, and quite a few other places. Or at least I built them. But what do you need all that space for? Like I said, I gave Mexico to the Mexicans and stuff, or without or to that one Mexican senorita. It's a very gorgeous girl that girl that had two or three boyfriends and then I left it in her capable hands and all that. So and then later on somebody tried to take it from her, the Federales. And I really don't know what they were doing really. Like I said They're supposed to work for me, but uh I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what they were really doing, so anyway. And she was a beautiful, gorgeous Mexican female. So, anyway, that just happened to, like, two or three men at the same time. <laughs> Whatever. She was a wonderful woman. Uh, Pancho Villa, or Vina, or Vila Lina. I think her name was Pancho Vina Lina, or something like that. So, yeah, Pancho Vina Lina. So, anyway, yeah. Anyway, most people just called her Pancho, or, or Villa. Anyway, though, but yeah. She was a wonderful girl. 